Surprise, surprise, y'all. <laughs> Didn't think y'all be hearing from us this earlier, did you? <laughs> we got a surprise podcast because we got a surprise album that dropped on a surprise day that was unannounced, of course. <laughs> uh, niggas just woke up one day and suddenly Donda, the long-awaited album from Kanye West, is now live. Uh, we don't listen to the album. It came out the day after we did our podcast and posted it. So we just want to do a quick little recap, give our thoughts, because, you know, the world moves on so fast <laughs> that by next time, people will already be over this. We have a Drake album supposedly, potentially, possibly, reportedly coming in the next week, uh, this week, actually. So just want to get our thoughts on this Kanye West album. And we have a, also a uh, self-described Kanye Stan joining us. <laughs> for- <laughs> that's not, that, that's really, I prefer not to be introduced that way, but I'll take it. I am, I'll, I'll, I'll wear the cape, I'll wear the cape, but the Kanye Stan for the music, not Kanye Stan for the man. How about that? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. funny how every every Kanye fan has to separate that now. Ever since the MAGA stuff and all that, it's like, no, I like the music, man. I don't know about that other shit. So I've grown it's used to, I, like, I've grown accustomed to it. Like, I had to do it with Kobe. Like, you know, we yeah. had to do it with Deshaun for a little bit. And now we have to do it with with mm-hmm. Kanye. It's just, it's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, man. The ba- the baby, I like his music. I don't know about them comments, man, but <laughs> yeah, you got to add the disclaimers yeah. on if, some. If you don't add it, though, people are going to say, oh, yeah, oh, you're a supporter of this. And it's like, yep, no, yep. I didn't even that deep. You believe exactly. slavery was a choice, too? <laughs> uh, don't even. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, I, we're, talk, we're talking about musical Kanye. And like, like I said, we have a special guest joining us, Mr. James Carlson. It's going to help, help us break down this Kanye album, man. We're going to break it. Long-ass album, but we're going to go through it. We're going to share our thoughts on it and let y'all know how we feel about this particular project. Uh, Figgy, fuck, we're going to get straight to the yeah, shit, man. man. I'm doing good. You doing good. No, 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 right no. Shits, yeah, man. no, no, we're getting right to it, man. <laughs> so we're going to get – I'm a late – so here's a quick timeline for how Kanye dropped this album. Of course, he had his last listening party or listening event in Chicago, made it very theatrical. I didn't watch it because, like I said, I wanted to come into the album as cold as possible. I didn't want to hear the album three times already before he dropped it. I wanted to have a complete listening experience when the album dropped. So he did his final listening party uh, this last week. Um, did a whole thing with his hometown house burning down. Kim Kardashian came out in the wedding dress in the end, signifying that, you know, they're probably working things out. Uh, He played the album. He brought out the baby. And uh, for a surprise remix, I guess you can call it, of the song Jail. And, yeah, so we had no idea when this uh, album was dropping. You know, he there was hints at a beef with Drake. And everybody kind of assumed that he was going to drop September 3rd, same day as Drake, which I was rooting for because I wanted the oh. chaos. I wanted the stands <laughs> to fight each other to the death. <laughs> it's pretty well, damn close to the chaos. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we didn't get that, though. Uh, the <laughs> album was released on Sunday. Um, now, Kanye alleges that this album was released without his approval. He made an Instagram post saying that Universal released the album without his approval, his final approval, and that the song Jail 2 w- was not included because the baby's verse could not get cleared by his management. Uh, but apparently that was resolved pretty quick because when I checked the album, it was there. Yeah, me too. So I don't know. Maybe when it first went up, it wasn't. But it, that got resolved pretty quick. And yet the the the, the baby verses on there. The album is complete as far as we know. No album art. I don't know if that was a creative choice or he just couldn't <laughs> think of nothing. You never know with Kanye. Uh, but it's an all black album cover. And yeah, it's a long, almost two hour listen. And several of the songs are kind of remixes of early songs, but 27 tracks in total, an hour and 48 minutes in length. And with that said, Figgy, we gonna kick it off with you, man. Yeah. You gonna have to be the 
<laughs> you got to start breaking this shit. Down. So how how, how y'all want to do this? Do y'all want to go track by track? Or I don't want to go track by. There's too many fucking songs, man. I was <laughs> thinking about it, but there's just way too many songs. Some of them I damn near forgot what they sounded like. I listened to the whole album once, all the way through, and then the rest of the times I skimmed it because it's okay. a long listen, man. Like I said, yeah. two hours almost. So. <laughs> Uh, hmm. How do y'all maybe, attack this? Y'all just maybe yeah. do it by sections. Yeah, I can. Um, yeah, I could go down the track list and give you my thoughts on that track, and then everybody we, we could do that. Okay, do actually, that. fuck it. Since yeah. we're only talking about the album, we can go track by track. Yeah, share our thoughts, and and yeah, we can actually do that. Fuck it, because this is all we're talking about. It's a special edition of the podcast. Ain't gonna be too long, so fuck it. Let's just break it down track by track. Let's just do it. Um, I'm skipping Don to Chant because you know, yeah. It's just- <laughs> I, I, yeah, I said that that was a little weird to me. <laughs> I, I, we- I didn't, I didn't understand what was going on there, and uh, it wasn't until after I read the credits. So I listened to the album all the way through without looking anything up, just to mm-hmm. listen for the surprises and all that. And it wasn't until I looked at the credits that this was Selena Johnson who were on the All Falls Down yep. song. And so um, I was happy that she was on it, but I ain't want her to be on it in this way. <laughs> Just saying Donda. <laughs> so uh, that was a little bit weird. But what you was about to say about this one? Well, I, I mean, I, I kind of liked it. So being the uh, Kanye stand that I am, like when you just break down his life and some of the things he went through, like the one thing he never really addressed or really got closure on was his mom passing. So like to start off, like this was supposed to be the album where like he kind of frees himself from a problem that he's always put off. And, uh, you know, to hear it at the beginning, you know, maybe somewhat awkward and weird in the way that it was orchestrated and put together. Um, I think it was more of just like a, a tribute to her, like letting like everybody understand, like, yeah, like, uh, yeah, it's a weird way. But like, that is my mom. Like, and he, he's made so many comments over the last two or three years about her and her impact and things of that nature that I think it was more of him just artistically being able to get it out there for him and mentally express it. That's a fair point. And actually, I got to ask you too, man, because we got to ascertain what kind of Kanye fan are you? Because there's different kinds, man. There, There's ones who like the Rockefeller, Kanye more. There's ones that like the... Uh, uh, power Kanye a little bit more when he was with the Hennessy going out with Amber Rose and there's ones who think that Yeezus is the greatest album ever made by anybody <laughs> so where where would you rank the, the current not counting Donda yet where would you rank your favorite Kanye albums generally uh, my beautiful dark twist of fantasy would be the number one album for me um, it's probably not the album I listen to most um, but from like a sonic aspect, from a orca- like the way the album was orchestrated, the live instrumentation, the the lyrics, the use of uh, of production, the features, I think my beautiful dark twisted fantasy is for me the best put together album probably in the last you know ten to twenty years. Um, I know a lot of people look at it and they're like that's crazy, but like if you just break down the album itself, I really think it's just a beautifully well put together album. Um, and there's not a song on there that I skip when I do listen. Like when I do listen to that album, I, I do start it at one and I finish it at, you know, at the end. So, um, I would rank that one graduation for me would be two. Um, I love graduation. I think, um, I just love the production, just kind of the way that he went about graduation, uh, called dropout would be three. Yeezus would be four. Late registration would be five. Actually. See, now I messed it all up because 808s is like, it's like two or three for me. Yeah, and it just depends yeah. on, mm-hmm. I always forget about 808s when I'm talking about his albums because it's not your usual Kanye album. So you tend to forget it because it's a totally different vibe. You're not going to put that up there with the other albums as it's, it's, it's completely different from what he's done. Um, but when you think about the impact of 808s and Heartbreak on hip hop in general, and if you recently even look at like the new rappers that are out now you can literally take 808s and say that this rapper is here because of 808s and heartbreak like there's so many different inspirations that people drew from that album um and he did something that most of pop artists can't do and that's you know we saw little wayne try to do a rock album that didn't work out too well like you see artists that try to experiment and it usually doesn't work i think kendrick's maybe the only other one that's actually pulled it off with pimp a butterfly um and so 808s is, is either two or three for me. 
Uh, I do like Jesus a lot. I think from I think it was ahead of its time. I hated that album when it first came out. I actually thought it was the worst, but I'm also a diehard J. Cole fan, so it dropped on the same day as Born Sinner. So I automatically thought Born Sinner was a better album. But now when I go back to it being a little bit more mature and older, I do think Jesus is a, one of the better albums he's put together. I think so, like the production on that album was far ahead of its time with the synths and, and the hard guitars and things of that nature. Um, so yeah, I mean, to the Life of Pablo, then after that, um wyoming do you put kids see ghosts in there I, I don't know i mean kids see ghosts would probably be above wyoming and life of pablo for me I to be honest count with you that as a kanye album i wouldn't yeah. count that that was a like that's like that's like watch, watch the, the throne. throne yeah i don't i don't really mm. count that but. i put watch the throne in the discography but that's just because it's a great album i guess but uh i yeah. i didn't i i listened to jesus is king i think like three times um you know, I have a relationship with God and Jesus, and I, I love that, and I definitely have my beliefs. Um, but when it comes to my music and what I want to hear, I'm not a big fan of those two worlds colliding for me, um, which I know is somewhat considered blasphemy, considering that we're talking about religion and Jesus. Um, but that, I don't, I just, I don't like those two to, to go. I don't know where I'd place Donda yet, so I, honestly, I don't, I don't want to put that in place It's yet. a little too early. Yeah, yeah it's too early. Um, so did you, how invested were you in this album rollout? Like, did you watch all the live stream or, or how, how, how did you approach this new project? So I didn't listen to the first two streams. Um, and honestly, I didn't even really care too much about them, but then I started to see people pay attention to what he was doing, which for me was somewhat shocking because it seemed that the world has kind of moved on past Kanye with the red era hat and, or the red hat era and some of the other outlandish things that he's been through. Um, so I didn't pay too much attention. When when the first one played and Jay-Z was on jail, I'm not going to sit here and say that it didn't grab my attention because it absolutely did, um, as Hove is, like, my favorite MC all time. Um, okay. So okay. that's when I probably started to pay attention. And then the second one came and people were talking about it more. And then I just thought, like, to myself as, like, a person and a fan, I was like, you know, Kanye really might be back on some of his, like, actual genius music stuff. Because the way he rolled this album out, honestly, it's one of the most creative ways that anybody's ever rolled out an album. I mean, he, he performed and played a non-mix and mastered version of an album, went back and read the critiques and everything online. After that, he went and changed it made the additions that he saw people thought was going to be fit for the album, went back again and watched people critique and change, made the tweaks, and then delivered this album. I think like, I think that's why the sales are a lot more than what people expected is because I think people were actually invested in this album emotionally because they actually feel they played a part in this album being created. And I think to me, like as a fan, I think it's really hard for you to top. Um, so I did watch the third one because I thought it was just crazy. I, it, like, you're never going to see this again. Um, and then I woke up on Sunday. Uh, I, I, I don't know why. I think I got like a Reddit alert or something. Well, something popped up and it was like Donda's out. It was like 7.59. I was like, okay. I told the wife we're skipping breakfast. Like, I grabbed <laughs> my AirPods. Uh, I grabbed my AirPods, laid in bed, and I listened to the entire thing. Jail Part 2 was not on at that time. Um, and then... It's something that me and my 15-year-old daughter always do when a big album comes out. She shares the passion of music with me as well. And so anytime a, you, a huge artist like this drops that we both love, she loves Kanye, we go for a drive for like an, you know however long the album is, and we just listen to it together. We don't talk, and then we talk about it after. And um, you got to get the car test. You really got to get the car test in on a new album, yeah. in my opinion. You can't get the AirPods. You can't, get the, like, you can't listen on your phone. You can't do YouTube. You got to go hook them up to the speakers and just cruise. And um, yeah. So a little more in depth than you guys probably wanted, but forgive me. Oh, no, 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 no. That was you, you, yeah, no, it definitely is not. Nah. And it, yeah, you got to absorb the album different ways too. You yeah. got to do the card test. You got to do the home theater test. You got to do the earphone test. That, you got to make a, sure. That's the thing that was pissing me off with people because it was literally like eight o'clock in the morning, and people out here like, "Oh, the album trash." It's just yeah. like, like, hold on. We, <laughs> like, Figgy, like, how many people did we get into it with on Twitter about it being I, trash? I don't understand. Yeah, like, like I get it, you know, I get it. You like what you like, and you, you know, but 
Like though the out the, the album was like an hour and fifty minutes. <laughs> like you you did not have time to go through all of that and listen to it. And you, I know them for damn sure you ain't go in the car and right. drive around and, and you ain't listen to it in the car. It was clearly just a you know uh, phone up to the ear, listen yep. to it. Skip. That's all it was. But, I agree. And you can't do that with a Kanye album, let alone. Like, I get it. Like, if you want to do that with the baby or whatever. But, like, this isn't – like, we're not talking about an artist that's going to put together a half ass piece of work. Like, no matter what you think of his other albums, production-wise, beat-wise, they've always been top tier. You may not like the rapping. You may not like the subject line. But there's always greatness. Maybe it's a little bit. Maybe it's not a lot. But there's always parts of it that you have to appreciate. No, definitely, man. And the fact is, a lot of people have already made up their mind on Kanye. Yeah. And if they don't like him, then everything he does is trash. He can't yep. do any right. And I, I've always said, man, as a fan of hip hop, period, like you have to appreciate Kanye's music. You can, even in the midst of his presidential run, very controversial, goofy ass shit he was saying every single yep. day with those press conferences, the Trump standing, all the stuff he was doing. I always said, no matter what, like, I'm going to check a Kanye West project. You mm -hmm. know, you have to. I, I, I might very much disagree. I'm not maybe going to pay to go see him if I disagree so much with everything he says. But when he drops a project, and it definitely, when it cost me nothing to listen to, yeah, of course, I'm going to listen to every Kanye project, man. So just as a fan of hip hop, you, you, I don't see how you can just hear a yeah. Kanye album dropped and be like, nah, I don't even want to yeah, listen it to was, it. it. Man, it was really bothering me on Sunday because... Like, I saw to that. Me, <laughs> to me, when people say something is trash, it's, it got to be... Everything about that album got to be awful, man. It got to be bad production. It got to be bad lyrics. It got to sound bad. It, it, it's very skippable. But um, it's just like, man, like, you can say what you want about the content, but the, the, to me, the music on there, it wasn't trash. I, I just don't think it was trash, man. But, yeah, that, that was bothering me. It's like, why is you calling something trash 8 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> like, but I, think, I, think it's I think people clearly just had something against Kanye. They was already checked out from the beginning. So if it wasn't. Well, that's the culture, too, now. You know, that's the culture. Like, if you like, uh, God, if you you remember when Budden like ripped Eminem's, uh, what was that name of that album that had like the chair? Was it Kamikaze? No, no, the one before that that had Beyonce on it and um, Walk on Water. Revival? Revival, yeah, that's mm -hmm. right, yeah. <laughs> and, and Budden ripped them apart before the album ever came out and said it was going to be trash. Like, that's, that's what people do nowadays. Like, it, it gets you clicks, it gets you engagements, it gets you what you want as a person that's looking for those types of things it's it sucks for the culture to be honest with you yeah it, it kind of got to the point where i'm like what are people actually looking for at this point <laughs> like you you got good production <laughs> and uh, you will get into the album in a minute but uh kanye he was he, I, I felt like he wasn't half-assing on this as, as as much as he did the the yay album yeah, and, like I, I just I'm kind of confused on what people want. Do are they looking for uh, college dropout Kanye? Are they looking for uh, <laughs> late registration Kanye? I just at this point I don't know what they're looking for if they calling something trash like this. But but to be fair, to be fair, Kanye's music as it exists right now isn't gonna be everybody's cup of tea, man. Yeah, like it's just not. It's not traditional hip hop anymore. Um, I mean, there are 808s on the songs, there are rap verses, but it don't sound like, let's say if you're a fucking, if you're a Drake fan, if you're a Drake fan, you're probably not going to really feel Kanye's music like that, man. Let's be real. Um, if you like certain other mainstream hip hop -y songs, like his music is just different now. And like, it's not going to be everybody's cup of tea. Some people just don't, aren't going to like the gospel themes either, you know? Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, and I, I totally get that, but you know, if I if I ask you how do you feel about um like some country artists, you might be like, uh, you know, that's that's not for me. You know, I'm not I'm not, I'm not about to say he trash, but you know, that's not my cup of tea. I I'm perfectly fine with that. But I I just have a problem with people saying this is just straight up trash. To me, something straight up trash is like, why is this person even rapping? Like, listen yeah. to this. You can't even listen to this in the car. <laughs> 
Like this will, uh, you know, this will get you to get the arts court snatched from your phone type of trash. But to be honest, Figgy, with your your past in rap, like you understand it a little bit more than most people to where you've put your effort and like passion into a project to where like you've probably seen people say that about something you've done and you're sitting there like, bro, you, you really haven't even listened. Like you haven't actually given the project an opportunity for you to actually give me that critique. Like you put a lot into it to hear somebody else do that. So you've been through the process to know what artists go through. So it probably gives you a little bit more of a different perspective. I agree with you, but I think that's probably why a lot of people don't really understand or respect it. Yeah, because they, I mean, they, they yeah, I, I, yeah, I kind of understand that. It's, it's like they're on the outside. They just hear it and Correct. it's trash and they just, just move on. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, look, there's two grades now in, in terms of music <laughs> critique on Twitter and social media. Classic it's either classic or, or trash. trash, man. We talk about this all the time. <laughs> classic or trash. An <laughs> album came out not two minutes. If you're a fan of that artist, oh, it's a classic. Classic. Yep. Yep. J. Cole last album, classic. And if there's, <laughs> mm. one, if there's a person, you know, no, I didn't like it either. I'm just saying. People said Oh, that. I liked it, but it wasn't a classic. <laughs> yeah, I, I was not a fan. I thought it was a weed play. But uh, really? just, I, I, I didn't like it, man. I, I wasn't really a fan. I, you I like Cole like in general different. or no? Uh, I, I'll, uh. I'm not a huge Cole fan, but I always give him a chance. You know, I admit he can rap, but uh, the, the, the level that people put him on, I don't think it, I don't think he's necessarily there. I don't think he's with, I'll be honest, I don't think he's even with Kanye. He's a better rapper than Kanye, yes. But does he have better songs than Kanye? Maybe a few that can compete in his whole discography, but that last album, man, like you know, Kendrick gonna come harder than that. You know, even Drake probably gonna come harder than that. I feel like J. Cole made a. I just feel like it. I don't know about Drake, man. I, that's a question mark, a big question mark. But I just feel like J. Cole kind of made an album. I don't know. It, it, it was just what I expected to hear from J. Cole. It, it wasn't. It didn't. It didn't surprise me in any way. But that, that's all. We had a whole podcast on J. Cole. <laughs> Listen to that if you want to hear my thoughts on it. But we're here to talk about Donda, man. We're here to talk about the new Kanye West album. Of course, it has a ton of features on it. He got everybody. And I think that's part of why he did this listening event. Because with the standing that Kanye was on, I feel like if he just asked everybody from the get-go to get on this album, I don't think all of them would have said yes. I don't know how many would have said yes. But just knowing that he was such a controversial guy who, quote unquote, got canceled for all the things he was saying, I think if he just straight up said, I'm making an album and invited everybody, I don't think he would have had this kind of turnout. But after that first listening party, when everybody saw how big it was and how invested everybody was in it, that's when we started to hear like, oh, everybody's selling me on his album, man. Everybody big in hip hop right now is on the album. And he put pretty much everybody on there. There's a couple, people, a couple artists that are upset, <laughs> uh, namely Chris Brown and Soldier Boy. <laughs> mainly Soldier Boy right now, because Soldier Boy was left off what I think was the best song on the album, but uh, deservedly so because his verse was trash. Um, so before we we can break it down track by track, but I don't want to make people wait before they hear our our thoughts on the album. So just a quick summary. <laughs> Uh, James, what'd you think about the album in general, man? What were your thoughts? You said you listened to it in different environments. Now, a few days removed, what are your thoughts about the uh, Donda album? Um, I think it's a very well put together album. Um, I think it's actually, I, I haven't heard him rap the way he rap. he's rapping, like specifically like off the grid, right? Like he sounded hungry. Um, he, he, he looked like he put a lot of effort into his raps. Um, I, I really, really enjoyed the album. I, I thought, and I, did, I actually went into it expecting to be completely disappointed. <laughs> um, I did. I, I did not expect to like this album. Um, I thought, you know, the first six tracks, I really think, like, he hit on literally the first, well, I guess, first five tracks, technically, you take Donda out. Um, like, if you look at those, the way that they come out, like, Jail is, uh, at least in my opinion, I think Jail is great. Um, I think the production is great. I think uh, the verses are great. Uh, obviously, Jay being on there, like, for me being a Kanye fan the way that I am musically, like, to hear those two back together, that's just something that I think every Kanye fan probably wanted 
like more than anything was for those two to reconcile and figure it out because you know that's they when you grew up on Kanye or Jay you you kind of grew up with both right um so that that was great um you know a little baby's verse on on, on hurricane i thought was great i thought the production on hurricane was great weekend's vocals were great uh, i just i really thought the album was very well put together i really do and uh even though it's 27 songs i i, I honestly I expected to skip a lot of them because it was so long. Um, and they're really, for me, there weren't that many skips. And I've been listening to it now since Sunday. When I hop in the car, that's what I'm listening to. Because I want to make sure that I actually, I'm not like, like you guys would say, like, a, you know, a, such a fan that I can't take my blinders off and really like see the music for what it is. But I actually thought he put together a very, very good album. Fair pay, fair, fair take, fair take. I'm going to say fair point and fair take at the same time. <laughs> fair pay. Uh, no, nah, that, that's fair, man. Uh, Figgy, got to know your thoughts, man. You were defending vehemently on Twitter <laughs> this album. What were your final thoughts on the Donda album? Um, I, I thought it was a good project from Kanye West, man. Um, I think the production was an A+. Plus. Yep. Um, it seemed like... Um, it seemed like he took more time on this project, even though it looked like he was rushing to put this out. <laughs> it seemed like all of a sudden he found out Drake was putting the album out. Then he just woke up and just started putting shit together. <laughs> but it did seem like he did um, spend more time putting stuff together with the lyrics and all that. Um, it, it, he took way more time than good, the good music releases and um, Jesus is King. Yeah, those seem like he just kind of threw those together. Um, I like that he had more content on his rap on on his album. J to me, Jesus is King was too gospel rap for me, and I'm I'm you know I'm a religious man too. I go to church and all that, but I I was never a fan of gospel rap. Uh, I, you know, I, I think um, I think. I think that that album wasn't bad, but I, it was just too many rap trying to rhyme John three sixteen with you know this other you know Psalms twenty four and all this other stuff. I really ain't like that at all. But it wasn't a bad sounding album. Um, it seemed like this album he was. He, it seemed like he opened up way more, you know, about personal stuff instead of you know just the you know Bible verses. Um, as far as the verses on this album, I was kind of up and down on it because, um, well, the verses from the features, I was kind of up and down on it. And last week, we actually talked about this with Sauce Walker on uh, West Side Guns album. Uh, I like artists stepping outside of their lane, but I could tell some of the artists on here was trying to be too clean. <laughs> yeah. It seemed like they was trying to f fish for, uh, you know, Bible verses or make sure they put God in the song and all this stuff. I, you know, I was kind of up and down with it. Some people sounded okay in it, but um, others I was a little disappointed in. And um, who do you um, think did 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 like sound right? Like who do you think like you weren't disappointed with? Um, uh, I was fine with West Side Gun the way he did it. Both of them, yeah. Yeah, he, he he. I think he sounded good. I was kind of disappointed in Con, Conway. Okay. I, I, Kanye, I mean, Conway is is a gritty artist, man, and it seemed like he just he just went the total opposite. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of Kanye and, you know, a little intimidated, but uh, the way West Side Gun did it, he was actually talking about <laughs> flushing drugs down the toilet. Yep. That I had to thank God. <laughs> and, you know, I was running from the cars, blah, 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 blah. I had to thank God. He, I like the way he did that because he was still himself. And it wasn't all of these, you know, um, you know, Jesus type of rap, <clears throat> I guess, trying to yep. force these Jesus, Jesus type of raps. Um, what else? Um I think I think it obviously I think it was way too many songs on here and features. I think the features kind of um, carry this album if it makes sense. Outside of the production, I think the features kind of carry the album a little bit. And um, I I want to say it might be more featured verses on here than it is Kanye verses. Oh, I would agree. Yeah, so I was I was a little upset about that, um, but it, it still sounded good. 
Um, songs were way too long. <laughs> One of my favorite songs on there was like 11 minutes. Yeah. And it's just like, man, it's, it, it, I, I still listen to it, but it's way too long. Um, and the album overall was long. Uh, you mentioned it, Rocket. It was like an hour and 48 minutes, hour 49 minutes. This was his longest album uh, in his career. The, his second longest, the, the other longest was College Dropout. And that album was an hour 16. <laughs> and that had like 15 skits on it too. So that was yeah. part of the reason why. <laughs> yeah. So um, the, the album was extremely too long. But outside of that, man, I think... Um, um, not to judge it too early, we still got, you know, let it sit a little bit, but I would probably put this album up uh, probably neck and neck with um, The Life of Pablo, to be honest. Be, I think, um, I think, good album. yeah, yeah, I think, I think the um, this album is a little more, um, it had more content on it than Life of Pablo. Life of Pablo, is sing, it, it got some good songs on there, but I felt like he was a little lazy with the, with the uh, lyrics as at some point in life of Pablo. But um as far as this, I think he was way more comfortable. It wasn't all the John uh 316 raps. Um he opened up a little bit and um I'm fine with this more uh I like I said I ain't really care for the Jesus is king for the simple fact that I felt like this is something uh, uh somebody in church will <laughs> get on stage and perform. <laughs> So um, this, to me, I felt like Kanye was way more hungry in this too. And like I said, his verses had way more content. He he was actually um, telling a couple stories and some. And um, I can't remember the last time we got this type of Kanye. But overall, I think, the pro I think it was a good project. I got to agree with y'all, man. And like James said, man, I was very much expecting to be disappointed. I, it was to the point where... I, I kind of reluctantly started to listen to the album just because I knew, like, okay, it, it's going to be what I think it is most likely. I kind of put it off until, like, late Sunday. I was like, okay, uh, I guess it's time to listen to the Kanye. I'm, I'm going to give it a fair listen, though. <clears throat> but uh, it, it really did surprise me, man. Um, the things of this album, you know, a guy who is religious but also at the same time, you know, lost, dealing with pain, still mourning his mother. Um, a guy who is going through a breakup of his family, his wife and a divorce. That was a common theme. Um, I like how you can tell when listening to Kanye albums where he is in life, man. Some rappers, you know, listen to their whole discography and it kind of all sounds like the same shit, you mm -hmm. know? Like it, it might be a little more, oh, I got more. Jay-Z, I kind of, you can tell where Jay-Z is too with a lot of things, you know? Um, with the whole art collecting phase, which was my least favorite Jay phase. But now he's more of a humble kind of guy, you know, went through a almost divorce. So you, I, I like when you can tell where an artist is at when you listen to a new album. And you can definitely tell that here. Um, I, I really enjoyed it, man. I did not expect to enjoy it this much. Uh, like y'all said, the, ver the like Figgy said, the uh, features really carried it. Um, Kanye was rapping his best, though, man. He he put effort into this. The scoop that he poop era is finally over, <laughs> I feel. He is back to trying in his verses. He's back to being, you can tell he was inspired. You know, that was my biggest concern. He was just making this album to make something, you know, and to have a spectacle because maybe it had been a while and he missed the spotlight. But no, he actually, you could tell there was care put in this album. I, I've seen a lot of bad reviews about this album, I got to say. It's not been well received, but I kind of am confused about that because I definitely think it's way better than his last two albums. Uh, by and large is as good or maybe better than Life of Pablo depending on how you like that album that's another controversial Kanye album too but it's at least as good as that like Figgy said man um, the production was really good I I've only got a few I, I do agree that is a very long album I, I do think that part of the creative process that's been lost in albums is that sometimes you got to make tough decisions man Sometimes you might like a song, but it might be unneeded and you got to cut it. And maybe it gets released or leaked later, but I kind of miss where the physical restraints of CDs meant that some shit had to go. <laughs> yeah. 
And now That's the it's time like on CDs. Yes. <laughs> but now, or you could do a double CD, which could increase sales, but you also increase production costs. So that's why you didn't see that many double CDs in the CD era. But now it's just you put out as many songs as you want. You rack up the streaming. I get it's a streaming number game. I don't know if Kanye is playing that game because these songs are long. And usually that's anti, you know, streaming boosting when you make a five to eight minute song. You usually want to make it like two minutes or under to increase restreams. But yeah, it is a very long album. It seems like he put everything he wanted to on this album. Uh, there are some songs I could have gone without, but only only probably two or three, surprisingly. Most of it I enjoyed. Um, I don't think, uh, one thing about the clean, th this album is a clean album, as in there's no cursing in it technically, but I don't think all the artists got the memo <laughs> that this album was supposed to be a clean album with no cursing in it. Because Playboy Cardi verse, you know, he cussed a lot and it was a lot of bleeps. I don't like, see, I don't like the bleeps, man. That's what got on my nerves. I, I wonder if he just didn't tell these people or they just didn't give a fuck. But I don't like, uh, it, it makes me feel like I'm listening to a Walmart version of an album when I hear this album sometimes, man. Yeah. I don't like that feeling. I'd rather, you know, either keep the curses in or since you're religious, make them redo it. Say, nah, you can't say nigga on this song. Nah, you can't say fuck on this song. Nah, you can't take the Lord's name in vain and say, because one guy said, oh, like, uh, I swear to God, I forget who said that, but they bleeped that. <laughs> and I'm like, man, okay. Y'all, he should have had them recut it if they weren't, you know, fit for the album, I guess. That kind of annoyed me. Small complaint, I know, but it, it did annoy me, and it was kind of a problem throughout the album with so many features on it and so many rappers who, you know, were saying whatever the fuck they want to say. <laughs> but overall, I did enjoy it, man. Um, I do wonder where Kanye is going to go next because I feel like this style of music can't sustain itself to this level. You know, eventually people are going to be like, okay, we get the gospel part, we get the Jesus part, we get the God part what's next and Kanye is a guy who always pushes the envelope so I very I'm very much wondering where he's going to go after this but solid album man I, I do disagree with a lot of the critique that I've seen because it's not being very well received on main publications I don't really know why man I liked it <laughs> I, well, I, it think I, I think a lot of it has to do like well one like uh, actually on the Thursday night the last listening there was no bleeping so you actually heard all of the cuss words and everything. So it, okay. I was kind of surprised that when the album came, that that was what we got. But like to touch on like the Jesus King, Jesus from Jesus is King to this, like it's a new life of his. So like he put out a gospel album and it wasn't received well. And I think it's hard for anybody in life, not just musically, but just in anything when you're transitioning to something, whether it be a new career or anything else, you got to find that balance to be able to try to make that transition. And I think he pushed that transition too fast with Jesus is King. And what we got was a John 316 type of album. And then he went back and then he was able to figure out what that balance looks like and how he can incorporate other different things within the album to be able to give us what he gave us in Donda. And like, I think that's really what's always been the greatest part about Kanye is the evolution process that he goes through because every album seems to always gradually go into either being better or going into a different way, path and it ends up being new, new sounds, new whatever it may be, new raps, new flows, um, new schemes. Um, and so I think it was, it was, that was the best part for me was that it wasn't Jesus is King and it wasn't evolution. It was really like, I'm going to throw it on there. And most of the titles are going to be named, you know, God breathed on this or Jesus Lord, whatever it may be. Right. But that's like a, probably the part of the next phase of the transition is like, okay, now, I've actually done really well with that. What can I do next to where I can start to really incorporate some of the other stuff to where it doesn't come off that way? That's fair. And I did think throughout this album, I did, I was thinking a lot. This was what Jesus is King should have been. Yeah. You know, I felt like it would have been much better received if he put out Jesus is King and it sounded like this. But, you know, that ended up being what it was. But I think he perfected the balance as best as he could at yeah. this yeah. point with this album uh so with that being said man we can go ahead and just kind of run through the track list 
um, talk about our favorite songs. I do have a lot to say about a few of them. Um, and we left off Don Chan, like we said, we skipped. Let's talk about jail, man. Uh, I got to admit, when I heard the snippet, because I did seek out when I heard, Jay-Z's my favorite rapper of all time, too, by the way. So Dope. when I heard Jay-Z dropped a new verse, I was like, okay, I got to check that at least. I did not like it when I first heard the snippet, when I first heard the clip. I thought the beat was typical crazy Kanye with no drums on it. I was like, what the fuck? And the Jay-Z verse was disappointing to me when I first heard it. Uh, in the context of this album, I actually am a huge fan of this song now, man. I don't know what happened, <laughs> but maybe just listening to it fully produced. I actually like this song a lot now. Um, the Jay-Z verse is growing on me. It, I'm, I'm not fully there yet. Yeah. Uh, talking about, I, I don't like him saying bestie and selfie and shit. Oh, my God. It kind of made me cringe. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you know he... I, I'm, it's growing on me. It kind of fits the song. And I always feel like Jay Z kind of dumbs it down when he's with Kanye, man. Always. So that, yeah. So that's just the thing he does. And I accept it now. But I do enjoy this song now. What do you guys think? Figgy, we'll go to you next. Uh, what do you think about this song now? Um, I thought it was a good song, man. It was super catchy. Uh, the, pr the production on this was very 808 heartbeat ish. Mm hmm. And um, to be honest, I kind of wish it had a little some um, some. I, I wish some drums came in on it, but um, outside of that, I thought it was cool. Um, and I I still don't really care for the Jay Z verse. I, I listen to it, especially after hearing Jail Part Two. Yeah, I, I, we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, I think I just think the Jay Z verse was kind of forgettable, man. And you know, last week we heard the um, Kendrick Lamar verse with um, Baby Ooh. and that verse got me excited for a Kendrick project. Yep. Like I'm like, okay, I think I'm ready for a project now. This verse didn't really get me excited for a Jay Z Jay Z project. I probably will be excited if he do announce something, but this wasn't the verse where I'm like, oh man, I need to. I can't wait to hold drop an album. It it didn't really do that for me with this with this verse but overall I, I felt like the, the the song was pretty good i like it it's super catchy yeah not yeah I, I, be in a I, lot of commercials man <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think uh so uh, one i agree with the drums part i think and it, it's weird like i was uh i was i was watching tiktok and this 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 kid uh took the drums on the end and actually play moved them to the beginning of the song and it sounds like it, they were supposed to be there it like blew up it like has like 14 million views and it actually sounds like a completed song it, the jail sounds complete um so I, you have to wonder like is there's a couple of those instances throughout the album where you're like what was he thinking like is this fully like Ma mix and master like are there parts that we're gonna like the engineer was gonna change mike dean was gonna change that didn't get to because maybe universal did put it out um but i i thought the song like you said figgy 808s and heartbreaks the harmonization during the chorus the way he uses his vocals um you know jay-z's verse i wouldn't say it's forgettable because i don't know if jay-z has a, an actual forgettable verse right i do think there's a lot of mcs and rappers that do have forgettable verses I don't know if I can name one by Hove that is necessarily forgettable. Um, it, it came off kind of lazy, but I also think it kind of fit the vibe of the album or the song specifically. Like, I don't know if we could have gotten a really introspective type of Jay-Z song on something like that, especially given the fact that they haven't talked, they haven't really like squashed whatever was going on internally to where like we could get something like that from Hove. And I think it had kind of had to be something where he, you know, he told him about, you know, to, you know, stop all the red hat stuff, like move it. Like, I, I felt like that was really kind of needed. Um, I agree with you. The selfie line, like the, I was just like, this, is this really hope? Like, is this, is this what we're doing? Like, <laughs> but at the end of the day, like I, I thought it went well with the song and I don't know if another flow or, or verse would have actually went with the song the way that we would have liked it to. Um, I, I I think it's one of my favorite songs on the album. Even if you took Jay Z off, honestly, I think this song. Even if you take the baby off, which we'll get to, I think the song itself. If Jay Z, if Kanye did a verse, this song is a perfect opening to an album uh, because the production is top tier, um, and everything else about it is really good. 
Got to agree, man. Got to agree. Um, that J-verse, I still don't know about it. But, uh, <laughs> no, nah, it's a good, it grew on me, man. I didn't think, when I first heard the song on the leak or the uh, listening event, I, I was like, this is the same old bullshit Kanye. But, no, this song is actually good, man. It grew on me. My friend hates it. I've been going back and forth with him. But, no, nah, I actually like that song. I think it's a good, good opening for the album. Uh, we'll go next to God Breathed. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of this song. It, it, it sounded very Yeezus-ish to me, which, depending on how you like that sound of Kanye, it is what it is. I didn't like some of the songs talking about, or some of the lines talking about Dustin Hia Hoffman. Like, <laughs> Kanye has some lines that just make you cringe sometimes, or it's make you laugh because they're so stupid. But <clears throat> Kanye is a master of that. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of this song. Uh, it's also featuring Bory, who I'd never heard of, but he's all over this album. So Kanye must really, really believe in him. And he did a good job on his parts of the album, I have to say. I never heard of him before or his music, but no, nah, he definitely showed out here. Um, any thoughts on God Breathed? That y'all have? Um, I, I didn't like the song at all. <laughs> Um, like uh, I, I felt like this was another um song that that kind of had an 808 heartbreakish feel to it to me. Uh, you you said Jesus, but um, I I could kind of see that too. But uh, I didn't really care for this song at all. <laughs> That's all I got. Fair enough. Fair enough. I I, I like the song. I, I wouldn't name it like one of the best songs on the album. I, I get the Jesus vibe though immediately as soon as the track opens. You kind of get that first. Uh, track on Yeezus with the synths and it's kind of it hits you right in the face as soon as you as the song comes on um, I also didn't know much about Bory I, th I think the hook was okay uh, probably could have been you know there could have been a little bit more to it um, but yeah I mean I, it was cool I you know I think I, if I had to guess I'd probably say it was probably one of his first early songs that he probably put on this album uh, if I remember there was a part it was either this or another song that was on Yandi um, that had a very similar flow and cadence um, and Yandi, I think it was like four years ago. I, I know Hurricane was on Yandi, and it's had like 22 different versions. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the song is good. I don't know who Vori is. I didn't know, but I, I thought he actually did really well. Um, I wouldn't say he was the, one of the best features on the album. Um, I think the best feature is somebody that a lot of people didn't know about, and I honestly had no clue about, which we'll get to the that on the next song. But I thought it was okay. I, I don't think it was like a top-tier Kanye song. Fair enough, fair enough. So skippable, skippable. So at this point in the album, I'm still undecided. I'm I'm kind of anxious about the rest of it. I'm like, we got like 25 more songs to go. If they all sound like this, I don't know if I'm going to make it. But uh, luckily, we were saved. I don't know if he did this sequencing intentionally, but the next song is what got me back into it. This song, Off the Grid, is what made me uh, like think, okay, Kanye is back. <laughs> Kanye is back rapping. He's making rap songs again, and we're going to be okay, possibly, at this point. It also features uh, Fabio Foreign and Playboy Cardi. Um, I was, I'm was i a former Playboy Cardi stan. I don't like his new sound, and this verse of his was his new sound, which I could have gone without. Fabio Foreign did a good job. Uh, he kind of reminds me of Skepta sometimes with his rap. I think he does a kind of a faux uk flow type thing sometimes but uh he had a great verse or good verse i'm not gonna say great but it, it, it was good it fit the song it's a very pop smoke sounding song too maybe yeah. it was just me got that F vibe fabio foreign and pop smoke are kind of similar i think yeah they, that i want to say they from the same place i i i, I want to say they both from brooklyn but yeah they kind of the same it's that New York drill sound, which ain't the same as like the Chicago drill or anything. It's that New York drill sound yeah. with those certain synths and all that. So, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> uh, I like this song. I would probably put it in one of my top songs on the album. Like I said, it got it restored the faith for me. Uh, what are you guys thoughts on Off the Grid? I think uh, I like Off the Grid, too. I like that song a lot. I think it was catchy. And um, you said you didn't like Playboy Cardi verse. No, I, I felt like his verse on this was uh, it was a probably a, pro I ain't gonna say the most entertaining verse from him in a minute, but um, I, I guess because we've been hearing bad Cardi verses, so this one to me I was kind of like okay I could kind of deal with it. 
So I was actually okay with this verse. Um, and uh, I like five-year-old foreign verse on this too. And I actually like the way the beat switched up for him because yeah. that's his sound. That's him and Pop Smoke had that same sound. So that was his sound. So I I like that. So um, yeah, I like Off the Grid. Okay, okay. I think Off the Grid's probably the best song on the album, to be honest. Um mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot, there's, I think the reason why is because, and it kind of plays off of going off of Jesus is King again. I don't think you expected to get something this hard mm -hmm. on this album because you're going based off of the past gospel stuff that he did and you made the transition to Donda and you, you hear the beat and you hear the flow. Like I, to me, I, and that's what makes music subjective and so great. But I thought Fabio, I've never heard of him before. I thought his I thought his verse was the best verse on the album. Mm. Like if you actually go okay. read the lyrics, if you go read the lyrics while listening to it, it's gonna take you're gonna be like, it, it was like wow, okay, that that was like a, a a mind like it blew my mind to be honest with you. And I'm not a pop smoke fan. I'm not even into a lot of that music, but I thought it fit the song so well. Um, and the there were it was very bar centric, which is my favorite type of rap. I, I'm so I love. Um, metaphors and analogies and things that, and he does that really well. But then, at, and the transition was great, Figgy. Like, I agree. Like, and I feel like that's what Ye is known for most on his production is the ability to kind of switch out beats and add a transition to where it seems like it fits, at least early in his career. Um, and then you saw it on an album where, you know, most people wrote Kanye off as an artist really leading up to this. Like, I think a lot of people probably thought that we weren't ever going to get a good album from Kanye again. Um, and then Kanye came in and that's the first time I've heard Kanye rap the way he rapped in a very long time. Like, I honestly, I can't remember maybe power, maybe Jesus. There's a verse here or there, but he, he did it and he went off for an extremely long time and it fit and it was his flow at the beginning from the entrance of the song to the end. I, I thought it was really well put together track and the production obviously is just on, on point. I agreed overall, man, definitely. I think we all agree this was a hard-ass song, signified that <clears throat> rapping Kanye was back, yeah. and this album might be okay. It's funny when the beat switched over. Mind you, the first time I listened to it, I ain't look at the credits or anything. I thought it was Pop Smoke because I heard he had the Pop Smoke feature on mm -hmm. him. So I thought it was Pop Smoke. So I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit like, oh, my goodness. Like, why, why do they keep putting Pop Smoke on this type of beat type thing? Or maybe that's all he had, but I thought it was pot smoke, but it was five year four. I'm like, oh, okay. Good point you brought up too, because I forgot to mention that. Um, it was very interesting that Kanye didn't put any of the features on the track list at all. Um, I actually like this a lot. I like when artists do this because it feels like a surprise. It, yeah. Number one, it encourages listening throughout the whole album and not mm -hmm. just skipping to the feature that you want to hear the most at that time right now. Yeah. So I like that. Um, I wish more artists did it this way. I know, like, the Kanye's and Kendrick's can, but everybody else, you know, I don't know if they're just scared to or just can't for whatever reason, but I do like this approach of it being a surprise who's going to be on the album I, I or think, next song. I think artists like this should do it like this because, you know, I guess a, a, a lower-tier artist have to put those features on there because no, yeah. Sell. yeah some people might not even take a look at the album with, but if they see drake on there you know that might get people tuned in on it yep agreed all right let's let's pick it up a little bit because we have a lot left to go <laughs> um next song is hurricane a another i like this song man i don't know if i'll go back to it a whole lot um but but it was it was a good song. I'm not the biggest weekend fan, but he did his thing here. I'm not the biggest little baby fan, but he did his thing here. Uh, good song, but just I I if I didn't I'm not gonna save it and play another playlist. Honestly, like I, I can see this song being used a lot and me singing in you know different commercials or shows or movies or whatever. But it, I thought it was a good song overall. And like I said, and I'm feeling better about the album at this point listening to it. I feel like. Is more rap centric than Kanye has been in a while. Uh, the hip hop sound is back, and I'm excited about the rest of the album at this point. It was a, it was a good song. I enjoyed it. Figure what were your thoughts? Yeah, I like the song as well. I like the production on here. Um, 
I feel like Lil Baby might be leaning towards making a gospel album, man. This is like his second or third. That's true. <laughs> like positive gospel verse he did. And uh, he, it seemed like he sound good doing this. So I wouldn't even be, I wouldn't be surprised if he did, uh, did something like that. But um, I, I like the weekend in this, in this song too. I felt like he elevated the song. Hundred uh, percent. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think you could plug in any other singer on this, and this song still be the same. And um, I think um, it, it, it sounds like honestly, it sounds like it should be his song. Like I wonder if it was his song at some point, but um. I think he really carried this song, but um, I liked it, man. I liked this joint. Uh, I think um, I, I think it's one, a great song as well. I lo I love the weekend. I'm gonna be a hundred percent transparent. There's something about his vocals that at, at times will truly become captivating in the sense. And I think this is one of those songs, like you said, like this does feel like his song. Like he's very captivating when he sings. You're definitely listening. Um, I, I think the production is extremely well. Like I said, this song has been leaked like 32 times with like 32 different artists before The weekend was on it. I think the original song Kanye wrote, wrote it for Rihanna to sing that hook. Um, and, you know, I, 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 thought the, I thought the hook was perfect with The weekend. A Little Baby, I'm not a big Little Baby fan. I've tried to listen to Little Baby like solo albums or even the album with Dirk. Like I do like the, the, the single they dropped. I thought that was extremely, like I thought his verses were really good on that, but the album as a whole, I just kind of, I don't know, to me, he's very similar to the baby with me. Like a lot of times it's the same flow, same scheme. There's not a lot of changes to it. You're kind of getting exactly what you're going to get every single time he raps. But lyrically, I thought on this, on this song, I thought he did his thing. Um, I thought Kanye again showed up rapping, which is, you know, I think what most fans are dying for is to hear him rapping again. And uh, I think you got that. Very true. I just thought of something too randomly. Um, why wasn't Chance the rapper on this album? I think yeah. Chance is done. Uh, well, I, I, think. I think musically, yeah, but him, it, the number he was the the Kanye stand when everybody else who was famous backed away. You know, he defended him throughout the Red Hat saga. He uh, there was a, that little documentary clip of him Kanye yelling in Chance's face and talking him down real bad. And Chance has always kind of stood by Kanye, and apparently he did go out there, and apparently they recorded something. I thought it was very interesting that Chance was left off this album because, I mean, he he was a Kanye soldier during the rough days. So yeah. I don't know what happened. It's kind of shocking Pusha T wasn't on here too, is he? And he was on the original. He was on the first one. So that, that's – that. I agree. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe some something going on in good music. I don't know. <laughs> um, let's keep going, though. Uh, let's go to what is probably one number one or number two of my favorite songs on the album. I like this song a lot. Praise God. This is when I officially was like, okay, this album is jamming, dog. <laughs> I like this song a lot, man. The production sounds damn near beautiful, dark, twisted fantasy era. You know, the beat is crazy to me. It's amazing. Uh, the feature, Baby Keem, I was, you know, the, the Kendrick song he just put out, I thought he he got so completely washed by Kendrick that <laughs> I kind of felt bad for Baby Keem. But Baby Keem actually sounded pretty good here, man. He had a good oh. verse. He had the longest verse, so maybe that helped. I didn't like the squeaky voice at the end. I couldn't went without that part. I feel like he was trying to bite Kendrick a little too much with that little voice change-up thing. <laughs> I just be yourself. I mean, the I know. Yeah. Maybe it's genetic. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, this also stars Travis Scott. I could have done with some more Travis Scott on this. This sounds like oh, a Travis wow. Scott type okay. song. I'll be honest, man. Damn. I, I could have done with some more because Travis Scott's part is very brief in this song. And it kind of yeah, sounds like a Travis Scott sound. Yeah. So I could have gone with some more Travis Scott on this song, but... Like I said, I thought this this is one that I saved and put in my different playlist. It's in the man. Serato. <laughs> it is. If I had a Serato, it would be in it, man. Uh, definitely one of my favorite songs on the album. I really like this song. Figgy, how do you think about it, man? I like the song as well, man. Um, I actually like the song a lot. This is probably my top three <laughs> on yes, this man. album. 
Um, I agree with you. I think Baby King killed this song. Um, and I, I kind of like that he was himself on here. He wasn't trying to be super, you know, godly or clean. I know they had to bleep a lot of stuff out for him, mm -hmm. but I, I'm glad he. Uh, I'm glad they gave him most of the song. And I could have, I could have did with some more Travis Scott too, but um, I think Lil King got over on everybody on this song. I, I'm, this song was dope, man. I, I really enjoyed it, and it felt if this felt like it should have been on a Travis Scott album. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like this a lot. I wish there was a couple more joints on here like this, but I ain't gonna be too greedy. <laughs> I, I like this song. <laughs> Yeah, I like this song as well. Um, Baby King definitely stole the show. Um, I mean, his verse was great. The production is great. It does sound like a Travis Scott song. It almost sounds like he could literally like take it off of Donda and throw it straight on to Astro World, and there would be no skip. Like you could just throw it on right after um, the song you did with Drake. I forgot the name of the song, but anyways, um, yeah, uh, I, I like it. I, I'm not a big fan of Travis Scott. Like I go back and forth with Travis. Like, I actually like earlier Travis more than I like Astro World Travis. And so, like, I don't feel like I ever get that Travis anymore. Um, but, I mean, the song is great. Uh, the production is great. It's, 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 a, it's a definitely a top three song on the album. Agreed, man. Agreed. Uh, it is, like I said, it was my favorite song on the album overall. It came in pretty early. So, I'm feeling definitely still good about this album at this point. Next song, I'll admit, I ain't got much to say about it, Jonah. I just didn't really like the song, man. <laughs> I, I, it did nothing for me. Um, I, I get this is one of those things where Kanye is just trying to be creative, trying to do a different sound. It just didn't do nothing for me. Did you guys like this song? Do you feel anything about it? Nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. I didn't, I didn't. I'm glad we so on you, the same page. I, me too, because we can go right to the next one, man. Uh, okay, okay. I like this song, man. I, this put me in a better mood because I was really starting to get worried about that Jonah. Um, I did like this song. Uh, did this song have any features after it? Uh, oh, yeah. Fabio Foreign was on it again. Lil Yachty. Lil Yachty, who I'm not a big fan of. I thought he did a decent job on it. Uh, Fabio Foreign. I like this song overall. Man, I really like this song. I thought he did a decent job on it. Fabio Foreign. I like this song overall, man. There is a remix at the end of the album. But, uh, yeah, this song was pretty good. You guys have any thoughts about it? Um, I didn't really, I think this song was meant to me. Uh, it was skippable for me. Um, it was, yeah, I, I ain't really care for it. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I actually liked the song a lot. Um, probably being my top five, to be honest with you. I thought the vibe of the song was on point, but I thought the lyrics were really there. Uh, I'm petty when it comes to Drake and Kanye. I'm not the biggest Drake fan. I'll be a hundred percent honest, <laughs> uh, but it has nothing to do with Kanye. Uh, I just don't like certain parts of Drake's music. I don't listen to rap music to hear R&B. I listen to rap music to listen to rap music. So I, I just don't want to hear him singing all the time. When he raps, he's definitely up there with other artists. So the little shots and digs here at, at Drake, um, you know, definitely were, were great to hear. And for me, it was more of like a confidence thing for Ye because you don't hear a ton of shots being taken at Drake by Ye. A lot of it is the rest of his camp or other people doing it for him. So I like that he took little subtle shots and he continues to do so throughout the album. That's true. And I forgot to bring that up too. There were, there were some shots thrown at Drake. Um, of course, they didn't say any names, but you, you could tell who he was talking about, man. Um, so so we'll, we'll see how Drake counters. Drake is always the, uh, I'm sure he'll have something else to say on his album too. So, so we'll so, see the back. So what did he say about Drake? Because I, I totally missed that. <laughs> I got he, a said, uh, he basically said, like, he starts off with, like, uh, okay, now they want, they, they want to rap again. Heal the wound, and then you stab me in my back again. You're the type to play the joke and try to hide your hand, not okay. the type to come around and try to play your friend. Um, you're the type to cut the grass and snake. You're a bestest man. I'm the type to close the deal and cut my ninjas in. <laughs> Good edit. <laughs> Um, so yeah, yeah, there's some subtle shots. Uh, and then some confidence in there too. He basically says like, you want to come play with the goat? You want to come play with the goat? Like, and I like the way he harmonized that. Like, he, cause it's kind of like he put an emphatic sound on it instead of it just being like a subtle line. He basically like highlighted it with his production. And I thought that was, was good. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, we got beef Kanye coming back, man. Kanye is getting his spot. Like I said, I still uh, I still subscribe to the theory that a lot of the motivation for this album was he knew Drake was dropping something and he had to step on it. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see how that battle goes. I know this album is setting all kinds of streaming records worldwide. So interesting battle. We'll see how Drake does week one. Um, this next song, I have nothing to say about it. I hated this fucking song, man. I'll be honest. Junior. <laughs> uh, play another Playboy Cardi feature. Um, I could have done without this. This could have been sit, left on the cutting room floor. This is the song about a Japanese designer, which feels out of place on a spiritual slash rap album. Like I, it did absolutely nothing for me. Bottom two track of the whole album for me. Uh, you guys have any thoughts on it? Did y'all like it? <laughs> I actually like this song. What? Yeah, I actually like it. I felt I, I like the beat, and I felt like this was that swag. I don't give a fuck. Kanye rapping on it, and I felt like we haven't heard that in a long time from Kanye. I was actually okay with this beat. I I disagree with you. I don't think it's I don't think it was the worst two on this album. <laughs> I I actually like it. Yeah, I actually agree. Um, I I, I like the vibe of the album. I feel like it's the most confident we've gotten from Kanye in quite some time. Um, and it really was just like a fuck, fuck you, this is who I am type of thing. Um, we haven't heard that in, in so long. Uh, I don't like Playboy Cardi at all. So like I never actually have liked Playboy Cardi. So I could do without Cardi at, at any time. Um, but yeah, I thought the song was actually a very well put together song. I just hate the hook. The hook <laughs> is so annoying to me. That and makes the sense. The beat is... The beat, the uh, the hook is just awful, man. That's what I mainly can't get past. Uh, now the next song is actually, believe it or not, mostly a Kanye solo. Probably the first Kanye solo song. There's Buju bent on, or how do you say his Jamaican ass name? Uh, but he's just kind of talking at the end. It's kind of an interlude. He's not actually rapping or singing or nothing. So it, it is a full Kanye solo song, man. Um, and he's talking about the same kind of themes, you know, throughout the album. Uh, I don't really have any strong thoughts. I thought it was an okay song, you know, <laughs> kind of album filler to me ish, but I did enjoy it. I can't say I loved it or really hated it. Uh, now believe What's what I, believe what I say that, uh, with the Lauren Hill sample. Yes. Oh, this is a Lauren Hill sample song. I forgot. Yes, yeah, this is a dope song. Fuck, okay. fuck what I said. I was about to, say. I was about to say. Yeah, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. This is my favorite song on the album, man. This is a single. I forgot this I like was it. a song. I forgot this was a song with the with the Lauren Hill sample. Yeah, this shit was fire, man. <laughs> Scratch what I said. This was a good song. I was about to say, hold on, man. <laughs> but look, man, I'm trying to remember yeah, what yeah. these songs sound like. There's no. no... You. Yeah, you threw me off when you said the Jamaican something at the beginning. I think but, that's uh, the next song. But to be honest, like 27 songs, I'm forgetting certain, like, I honestly, I've listened to it so many times, but not looked at the, like, song title. When I hear a song title, I have to, like, go and read the lyrics real quick to make sure I remember that we're talking about the same song. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I actually had to write a couple notes, and I had to listen to the, I had to listen to the album again. Um, I did that today. Before, yeah, so I could kind of be refreshed on what everything was. But um, I like this song a lot, man. Um, yep. I like. I think the Lauryn Hill sample is is perfect, even though a lot of people sample this. But I like. It was a good vibe to it. Uh, again, <laughs> I think it was some 808 heartbreak type of feel to it to me. Um, it was. It kind of remind me of the song that was on the Life of Pablo too, the one where Tiana Taylor had the video for it working fade. out. Too. It fade, yeah, yeah, faded. It, it remind me of that. It kind of got that feel to it. But um, this is my favorite song on the album. Okay. I wouldn't go that far personally, but I did enjoy this song. James, what do you think about it, man? I, I, I actually love this song, too. To me, it actually gives me somewhat of an 808s vibe, but also a college dropout vibe, like a, like a new workout plan, 2021, just the way that the melodies and everything are ride in together. I thought it was just very similar. Uh, I thought the rapping aspect of it was great. And then, like, to me, one of my favorite parts about Kanye has always been the sampling aspect of what he's able to do with samples. Like, like Fig said, like, this song is probably one of the more, like, sampled songs in hip hop. And you hear it on, I think Cole did it, like, a lot of, a lot of rappers have done it. But I thought the way Kanye did it was so different than what you would expect to hear from this sample. Um, I thought this, I, I feel like this song's a single and there should be, like, a video 
And like this should be something he pushes because this can be played on the radio. This could be played at the club. Like this could be played outside. Like there, there's so many different avenues that this song should be played. I, I thought it was definitely a great song. Agreed, man. I wouldn't say it's my favorite on the album, but I did enjoy it. The, the Lauryn Hill sample flip was cold. Uh, I did enjoy it. Next song is more Jesus is King ish than anything. <laughs> um, it is featuring the Sunday service choir. It's called 24. Um, very, very got not much to say about it besides the fact that it is a gospel song. It is about, you know, uh, God help me, please. That's a summary of the song, basically. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, if you're a spiritual person, I'm sure it'll really touch you. I'm not you know, a super hard Christian or anything like that. So, like I said, I, I appreciate the themes of this album and how you can tell where Kanye is. But this song in particular, like I listened to it once. I don't think I'll ever go back to it, but it, it was fun. It fit the theme of the album, if that makes sense. Figgy, you have any yeah. thoughts on this one? Yeah, I didn't like it at all. I think it was, um, I think it was a little bit too, it was too Jesus is King for me. I think it would have fit well on that album, but to me, I, I didn't like this one at all. I think I like the production. Like, if I could just maybe just get the beat itself and take off the like, all the lyrics, even the like maybe the chorus comes in and just does the, the, the hook, and then everything else is just like an instrumental, I'd probably vibe out to it and drive the car like and just listen to it. But outside of that, like, I definitely could skip this song. Like, it's crazy if you think about what we've already skipped. Like, there's probably five songs we've skipped which makes you think like, what would this album really be? We still have like another 14 songs to go. What would this, what, how would we really rate this album if we were to actually take some, like these five, six, seven, eight songs out? Like, would it be, you know, one of his better albums? A hundred, honestly, man, if you keep the hits and minimize the misses, this is up there with some of his best work. Yeah. I believe. But unfortunately we had, like you said, we have a lot more to go. Let's speed it up a little bit. Next song is probably either my first or second favorite. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in. But I think this is the shining highlight for me of this album, man. This song, Remote Control, I thought it was amazing. Featuring when I Young first Thug. heard the beat featuring Young Thug, uh, th I thought this song was amazing, man. This is the song I keep going back to. I hear replay at least two, three times before I went to the next song on this one. Um, I think this song is amazing. Uh, probably either the best or second best, depending on my mood, a uh, song for me on this album. Young Thug did his thing. Uh, he didn't. He didn't keep it. He he mentioned God, but he didn't keep it too, you know, gospel-y. Um, Soldier Boy was mad that he was left off, but he was left off with good reason. He would have brought this song down. I hate to say it, Soldier. <laughs> I would like but to nah, hear his it verse. wouldn't have worked. I would like to hear his verse. He put it out. He put it out. <laughs> okay. He put a video. If you check his Twitter, he put a video of him. Uh, in his verse playing. It's like a video of him just sitting by his computer or standing by his computer and they're playing his verse off the song. I mean, it, it probably wasn't the worst verse of the whole album, but it, it would have brought this song down, man. It didn't need it. Mm. So, yeah, I like this song a lot. Kanye was never a great singer, but he did his thing on a hook, man. The hook is catchy as fuck. Uh, yeah. What do y'all think about Remote Control? Yeah, I like the song, too. Um... Okay. Okay. We're gonna get through it. All right. So I like the song too. I think um Young Thug, he I th I think he was the highlight on this. He sounds super smooth in this song. I, I I like the song. It was a go for me. Yeah, I like the song too. I think the hook is great. Um it's very catchy. Um I think the production is really good, but you're right, like Young Thug definitely stole like this this song in its entirety. Uh, next song is a song featuring Kid Cudi and Don Tolliver. Uh, I didn't like this song at all, man. <laughs> and I was looking, I was looking forward to it. Oh I like my Don, god! I like, I like Don Tolliver and I like Kid Cudi. This song sounds like something that would play at the end of a CW episode of Supernatural or maybe <laughs> oh my uh, god a rom com so respectful <laughs> this song. Oh my god <laughs> <laughs> <Not> CW <laughs> Oh my god This song sounded so cheesy man like I, I just it did nothing for me man and like I'm a big fan of Kid Cudi I think Kids See Ghosts was a great album or project, whatever you want to call it. I'm a big fan of Don Tolliver, man from Houston. 
But yeah, this song did nothing for me, man. It, it, it just sounded very cheesy. Figgy, what do you think about this song? <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought the song was okay, but I just don't. My only problem is I think it was just a little too slow. It was it was a little too slow. Was, I, I wouldn't say it was a snooze fest, but you got to be in the right place to play it to me. Yeah, I would agree. I, I mean, anytime Kid Cudi's on uh, anything, to be honest, like I'm going to full, just be honest here. If Kid Cudi hums or coughs, <laughs> I'm automatically going to think the song's probably the greatest thing that's ever been created. Um, I just love Kid Cudi, so he can do no wrong in my eyes. The fact that you said that it could be at the end of a CW show is like a true level of disrespect that I've never heard anybody <laughs> ever be able to give an artist. And I applaud you for it. I applaud you for it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, man, I was looking forward <laughs> to this song. If I if I knew that the Don, if I, there was a track list that said the features, I probably would skip right to this song. But it just did nothing for me, man. It kind of it was disappointing in the same way the Pop Smoke and Kid Cudi song on the last Pop Smoke album was. It was just completely let down for me, man. It sounded like something that would play after the sad episode of a TV drama. It just did not do anything for me, man. But to eat their own, next song, uh, Heaven or Hell. I don't have anything to really say about this song. Uh, another song that kind of sounded like something on Jesus is King. It, it wasn't bad, but I probably won't go back to it. Any, anything yeah. thoughts you guys have? Yeah, I didn't care for the song as much, but I do appreciate the rapping on there. I feel, like he, I feel like he put way more effort in uh, what he's rapping about and he's actually bringing content. So I did appreciate that, but I didn't care for the song. Yeah, I would agree. I think it, it uh, the song itself, eh, but like the rapping really saved the song for me. I, I really thought like there was so much effort into it. I thought the scheme that he decided to go with and his flow, I thought was like perfect for the song. Um, and then he's actually talking about something. So I actually thought it was a, a pretty good song in the concept, uh, like if you just talk about the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I can I can get down with that, man. Should we even talk about this? The next song is a uh, a skit, basically. Yeah, it skip. is a Ariana so we we can skip that. Yeah, yeah. Skip. skip. We we can skip that Donda song. Um, <laughs> keep my spirit alive. This is a song that had the Griselda folks on it. Um, I like this song, man. I like the how the Griselda people sound. Sometimes I like when they step out their comfort zone. And, and rap over something that actually has a beat to it with some drums on it and don't this sound mix. like just, yeah, <laughs> a loop of a 1975 TV show beat or something. <laughs> this actually sounded pretty good, man. I enjoyed the verses from Conway and West Side Gun. Wish they had Benny on it. I think Benny's probably the best, my favorite rapper in Griselda. I wish she was I on agree. Yeah. For whatever reason, he didn't make it, but still a good song regardless. Think what you think, man. Yeah, uh, I like the song too. I like I like West Side Gun on this. I I talked about it earlier. I like the drug talk followed by Thank God. And I felt like he was himself on this. Um, like I said earlier, I was a little disappointed in Conway's verse. I felt like he could have, I, I wish he was a little more himself instead of focusing on the, you know, the covered in the blood of Jesus type thing. And um, I, I, if he was himself on it, I think it, I think it would have been cool. It, it wasn't a bad verse, but. I'm just used to the the gritty Conway. Yeah, I I like the song. I, anything Griselda does, like I'm a I'm a big fan of in general. So like, and I agree with you, Rocket. Like Benny to me, like if you add Benny to this track and we actually get like a Benny Benny verse that's based on like a very similar to Conway, I think you I think you have like a smash. Maybe not hit wise, but I think the record's going to be a total vibe. Um, I was actually just reading on Genius, and I had no idea um, that Royce the Five Nine was on this song, like with Kanye. Oh wow! Mm. So I don't I'm know. Sure now I got to go back too. and listen to it again. But I, I did not hear Royce on this. And, Wait, and he, he was, was actually on MC. the song. Uh, it's, it says verse three, Kanye West and Royce the Five Nine. Oh, wow. I guess he must have been doing it because that's one thing Kanye did that made it kind of confusing. Like he would go split a bar with somebody and like yeah. that was the first line and he would finish it. But it was hard to tell like who was rapping sometimes. It yeah. always sounded like Kanye to me. But then you look like on Genius and say, oh, it was like Fabio Foreign and Kanye on this yeah. part. Yeah. yeah. So that that was an interesting creative choice. Maybe he I guess he did it intentionally to kind of throw things off. But 
yeah, it, uh, interesting. Like I said, that was a good song. Next song is the epic, I feel. I feel like this is like the theme song of the album. This song, Jesus Lord, the longest Kanye bars we've probably had in a while, if ever. I mean, he's just going off on this, featuring Jay Electronica, who is one of my favorite rappers. Um, and he he was spitting a spitting a holy, you yeah. know, he was he was oh, very Jay Elect <laughs> he was very Jay Electronica on this song, man. He was peak <laughs> Jay Electronica with the whole tap uh Christianity slash uh five percent mathematics uh all that stuff, man. He he was in his prime form. Kanye was rapping from the heart, man. He he wasn't dropping a double triple entendre, but he was rapping from the heart on this song. The beat is great. I'd say this is one of the top songs on the album, if not top one or two uh, or three. I know I keep changing and saying what my top one or two is, but it's definitely one of my top three songs on the album, man. Definitely what I feel is the theme song of this album. And I really enjoyed it. The remix, of course, had the locks on it too. So yeah, great song all around, man. Eight minutes long, long clip at the end about Free and Larry Hoover. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this was my favorite. Uh, well, not, I would say this was the best song on here. Uh, Believe what I say is my favorite, but this one was the best one to me. And I actually talked about the song on the podcast at one point. This was the, one of the songs I, I I had to break out and go find to listen to it. When I this was, I want to say this was after the verses, and uh, I found out he flew the lots out there to work mm -hmm. on the album. And um, I don't like, you know what, let me go, because I missed the whole listening party. So I'm like, you know what, let me go listen to it. And I actually found it on YouTube and listened to it. I'm like, man, this song is amazing. <laughs> this song is like 11 minutes, but I didn't give a damn at that point. So uh, I really like the song. Um, like you said, Rocket, Kanye really rapping on there and pretty much storytelling. And uh, you really don't get that too often from Kanye. And um, I love the J Electronica verse, the locks, and Larry Hoover. I, I I I like everything about this song, man. It's nothing bad about this song. Even I'm okay with the 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 length of it. Like I, <laughs> I'm good with the song being 11 minutes, man. But um, I like it a lot. I agree. I think it. I think I, I hate to like go back and forth, and I'm kind of with Rocket too. Like this is my favorite song. This might be one or two, but like as you go through the track list, like. To me, it just tells me that the album's a lot better than what I actually even actually thought it was. Because when you go back and discover what songs are we're talking about, it's like, okay, yeah, I forgot about that because there's freaking 27 songs. You're like, what the fuck? But this song is great. It really gave me like a late registration graduation vibe with the storytelling. Kind of reminds me of Roses in the sense of like going through and telling his story in the way that he did. Um, you know, Jay Electronica, you know, I, I'm... Anytime he raps, I'm going to just stop what I'm doing and listen. Unless it's the Jay-Z, Jay Electronica album, then I'm going to skip past some of it. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you're talking about an MC that literally elevates the entire MC world, in my opinion, when it comes to his lyrics and rhyme scheme. Like, he's up there with Lupe Fiasco and, like, the Royces of the world when it comes to being an actual MC. Like, I, it always blows my mind the way he's able to twist and just – I don't know, like the J, like, what do you say, J, let entendre or something? Like, I, I was like, oh, like man. Donica. Yes, I was like, what the <laughs> hell? I was like, my God. Um, so, yeah, I thought this, I thought the song was great. I, I definitely think it's the best song, hands down, on the album. Definitely. And, and when you listen, when you break down J, electronic lyrics, you learn something. Like, Every I time. knew, of course, I knew, of course, he, he dropped a reference to the Ross trials in this verse he said to the monk who visited Rothschilds like the only the Thelonious did Panonica <laughs> and I didn't know what he meant by this I had to look it up on Rap Genius I hate to admit it I had to look it up on Rap Genius and Thelonious Monk apparently had an affair with one of the Rothschild women or heiresses the same way that's the same thing Jay Electronica did when he was dating that Rothschild girl mm -hmm. who were like what the fuck is Jay Electronica doing but he dropped it and made it a dope bar <laughs> and the flip with the monk that visited like the loneliest monk it, it, it was insane man <laughs> 
So these are the things that blow my mind when I listen to a Jay Electronica song, man. So definitely one of the best to do it. We got to keep moving on, though. Um, next song is New Again. A uh, very controversial start with this song, with the fucking, when I hit you with the W-Y-D, you better not hit me with the H-E-Y. It better be like, hi, with a bunch of I's, oh. with, a a, with a bunch of Y's. I almost cut the damn song off after that part played. <laughs> It sounds like something that plays in a weird <laughs> dance bar that I don't want to be in. But it kind of grew on me, man. When Once you get past that part, I think the song is fine. I'm not going to go back to it, but I didn't hate it. Biggie, what'd you think about this song? Yeah, I I, I'm, I was actually okay with those bars. It, to me, though, oh, no. those were classic uh, <clears throat> IG caption. Um, just, I don't, I don't want to call them fabulous bars, but <laughs> those are the classic, normal, basic Kanye bars. That These are two chains me. bars, man. <laughs> no, nah, I wouldn't do that, man. I think because Kanye, he got those bars where it's like, damn, I could have thought of that. But he make it sound so cool. Like, wow. Like, damn, that's kind of creative. And, um, I, I was okay with that. Um. The song was cool. The, my, but the only problem with this song is I ain't, it's a featuring Chris Brown. I ain't really hear Chris Brown in this album or, or, yeah. or on this song. I, I guess that's why he he said Kanye is a whole ho. <laughs> I, I don't know what that maybe that has something to do with it, but I ain't really hear Chris Brown in this oh. album. I did like the song. I like the song. and I, I honestly like the hey and hi. Like uh, to me, it, it kind of gave me the. He kind of gave me the corny Kanye vibes when he came into the game type of thing, like the college dropout and some of the lines that he had on there. So, like, it, it was kind of just reminiscent for me to be able to go back and hear it. Um, you know, I, I actually thought he was kind of rapping again, too, which made me, like, actually happy because you just don't get it. Like, yeah, it's not like some complex rhymes on the second verse, but it was just the way that he was able to put it together. I think it's like literally four, four words, four words, four words, four words the entire time. But still, um, I thought it was a very good song. <clears throat> and I thought the production. No, fair enough. The production was pretty good, man. I'll say that much. Um, next song, Tell the Vision. I was a little disappointed skip because it's the same. <laughs> we could skip this skip. one. This was the same. Yeah. This was the same song skip, that skip, was skip. on the uh, skip. Hot Smoke <laughs> album. So, yeah, it was the exact same I, verse. Yeah, I'm entering my Shannon Sharp right here. Straight yeah. up. Nah, well, you can skip that, man. <laughs> now, this next song, though, man, I actually liked it. I actually mm -hmm. like this song. I like introspective Kanye. This song is called Lord, I Need You. Um, very, very much a, a, a more gospel-y type song, but it's Kanye spilling his guts about, you know, <sighs> his relationship with his wife, Kim Kardashian, and how things kind of fell apart. But I, also, he, you know... He still needs his wife, man. And, you know, these are things that a man can relate to, definitely. You know, these bars that kind of hit me when he said something like, uh, I got to look it up. Maybe it was a different song I'm thinking of. But no, nah, this song, I, I enjoyed the, uh, the, 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 uh, the introspective Kanye, the uh, uh, peek into his private life and how, you know, he still loves his wife, even though things crumbled and it's a hey love there. I like this song. What you guys think? Yeah, I liked it too. I think it was a calm collective Kanye rapping on here. Um, yeah, I agree with you. Um, the only problem I had was something he said. He said the best collab since Taco Bell and KFC. It had me thinking like, was that a good collab? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so when he said that, I was kind of like, really? <laughs> like, maybe, I, maybe that was a, a double entendre. Like, maybe it wasn't a great mix. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe Kanye yeah I was. Yeah, I was just kind of like, huh? But uh, outside of that, I thought the song was cool. I think, uh, like, for me, it kind of threw me off when the time, like, when I first saw the song title, because it made me, like, assume that it was going to be, like, his praise to the Lord and how he needs him. But it's like he's saying, Lord, like, I need you. Like, yeah. if he was talking to her, like, Lord, I need you. Like, I can't go without you. Um, not necessarily to the Lord. And, like, I, you know, I've been married 16 years. Figure you, you, you know, you've been married. Like, uh, Rocky, you married? No, I'm not married. I'm not married. Okay. Well, you're yeah. lucky. I mean, yeah. uh, you're, it's unfortunate for <laughs> you. Uh, no. <laughs> um, but, I mean, I think we all go through it. And in a relationship you all you're gonna have rough rough times where you know maybe even in a marriage where things might end or come close to an end or separate or whatever but
But then like you go through this introspective part of your head where you figure out exactly what it is that you need to do. And you really grow together and learn. And um, I can imagine doing that under the spotlight that they do. I mean, these are the two most famous people in the world. And um, I thought it was dope that he just got so vulnerable and just kind of openly admitted and talked about it. I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it because that's what made me a Kanye fan was the emotion he put into his music. You were always able to feel it. it it's like it, you could hear his emotion when he rapped. You could hear the passion. And that was something I heard. And it just felt great to be able to hear that again. I agree 100%, man. Um, next song is called Pure Souls featuring Roddy Rich. Kind of another gospel type song. I didn't hate it. Skip. I didn't love it. <laughs> yep, skip. You can skip it. Skip. I like this. I don't, like, I don't like Roddy Rich. this. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I think he's okay. I think he's okay. Yeah. I, I, he isn't. I don't hate him or love him. I, I think he's all right. Uh, next song, Come to Life. I like this song, man. Some more Kim Kardashian uh, introspective lyrics here, man. Like, I don't know. These are things that people can relate to when she when he says, I don't want to die alone. I get mad when she's gone, mad when she's home, sad when she's gone, sad when she's home. Like, that's really how I'd be feeling when you live with a girl, dog. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be missing her, but then she's like, oh, that's yeah. why she's here. Yeah. So my wife go out of town, she go back home, and I'll be like, Yes, you know, I got the spot to myself. <laughs> Yep. Had a couple days um, or or a day that night. I'm like, damn, man, when's she coming back? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I can, you know, be single again and just live at home <laughs> by myself like this. Nobody likes sleeping alone. Is that what Drake says? I hate yep. sleeping alone. Yeah. Nah, I thought I thought that was a good song, man. There, there was some 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 bars that men can relate to. Definitely being in a relationship with a woman where you, you want her to be around, but then when she's around, you get upset. But then she's gone. I don't know. I like this song. <laughs> uh, next song, "No Child Left Behind." You y'all have anything to say about that? <laughs> I I actually like that song. We heard this song in the commercial. Uh, tease of it in the commercial in the uh -huh. Nike commercial with Shakari Richardson, and um, I'm still okay with it. I just wish it had a, a couple drums, man. Yeah, like it ain't even had to have no bass in it, man. Just a couple flat drums, I would have been fine with it, but um, I like it. I like the beat a lot. Um, I think it was cool. I think it was a perfect length if it wasn't too long, but um, yeah, I, I like the song, I'm still fine with the song. Yeah, I do wish there was more production to it, um, but I think there's, like, parts, of, like, even though it's, like, only, like, I don't know, the verse of Bivori is, like, six, maybe eight bars, um, you know, I feel like Kanye wrote those specifically because it's, the what he says is very much the public perception of Kanye, I think, coming into this album was, like, his back is up against the wall and he's turned against, so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I liked it, I, I'm not gonna say, I mean, there's literally like eight words on the song, so I'm not going to sit here and say it's this masterpiece, but um, it's a good song. I, I don't skip it. Yeah, and that's basically the final song of the album. The rest of the songs are just remixes or alternate versions with different people on four of the songs. Uh, the oh. only comment I have on those is I think the baby fit jail pretty well. I got to yeah, say, man. Yeah, I was going to say, I got a hot take on that. I, I feel like this is better than the first one. I, I like this better than the first I one. I agree. And I, um, I'm um, i not saying his verse is better than Jay-Z's, but I just think he fit this song better than Jay-Z fit um, that song. I think in the current, yes, he does. But I feel like the Jay-Z version might age better I because – uh, the baby's talking about something that's very recent and specific. And as the years go by, we'll forget what the fuck he was even talking about here yeah. or referencing. But at, in the right now, yeah, part two is better than part one, I got to say. But I think five, ten years from now, we'll go to part one probably more. And part two will be kind of confusing. We'll forget about all that. But uh, I, I didn't hear Marilyn Manson. I couldn't tell what he did on this song. He apparently hit it on this song. Yeah, what I was about to say, was it like a guitar or something? I don't know. 
the, the rap genius has him and Kanye. Maybe he did some guitar production. I don't know. But, yeah, I couldn't tell what he did on this song. So I guess technically he is on the I, album. But I guess he yeah. I guess he part of the who's going to jail tonight. Or yeah, yesterday. possibly. Okay. Yeah, I think he's uh, on the I'll be honest, we all liars. But I do think uh, he's on the chorus, um, supposedly. But I don't hear it. I do think the baby spent the verse of his life, though, to be honest with you. And I, even though it will be yeah. forgettable, I, and I, I honestly, he's the same flow, same scheme, same pattern, same voice, same. No matter what the baby drops, it's always the same. And so that's usually my irritation with him. But on this song and this beat, it actually fits so well that it wasn't irritating. And lyrically, he was definitely right there with it. So um, I agree it fits better. But we're always going to go back to Hove and, and Ye because that's just like there's more of a story there. Nobody's going to remember what he said at Lollapalooza or wherever it was he said. Yeah. Wherever he said it. Yeah. It was uh, Rolling Loud. Yeah. Rolling Loud. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. And it sounds good to see uh, the baby on a song that doesn't sound like Suge. You know, yeah. it actually has different beat to it. So yeah. That Spanish I, Bob beat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we talked about Jesus Lord with uh, the locks already. Did a good job on that. Fire. Um, so, yes. It's time to wrap this thing up, man. Y'all heard our takes on pretty much every song on the album. Uh, gun to your head. One to five. What would you rate this album? We'll start with you, James. Put you oh, on the spot. Yeah. Five, yeah. I'd probably go like a... How many did we end up skipping? I think we skipped six. I think is what we I think it was six. And if we take off the additional four remixes, so that's ten songs. So we're looking at a 17 song album. If if it was that, I'd probably give it like a 4.6. I think now the way it is and the way it's constructed, probably like a 4.1. Even the songs I say skip, I still play through, but that's just my methodology when it comes to any album. I listen to it from one through. I never skip to a song on an album because I feel like the artist made it this way for me to listen to. Um, so even if I'm not a huge fan of that artist, I'll still go all the way through. So I'd go like 4.1, 4.2. I really, I love the fact that we, the man that was written off, and I even wrote him off, I, I, me and Figure were talking about it on Twitter, he's literally like a drug. Because when he went through that whole Red Hat era, I thought I was, I was talking so much shit about Kanye at home, to my wife, to my friends. I, I was like, I'll never, ever listen to this man again. Like, how could he be so ignorant? And then, you know, here I am reviewing an album. Like, you know, I, I love him as an artist. I think he's so great. I definitely think he's the most talented artist of our generation. And uh, talented artist. I don't, he may not be the best, but I think he's the most talented. Um, so, yeah, 4.1. Okay, okay, okay. Biggie, you next. Um, I, I ain't gonna lie. I gotta give this a um, 4 out of 5, man. I think it's solid. I think the only thing I hate about this, even outside of the albums uh, or outside of the songs I'm skipping, the, the only problem I have with this is the length. It's, it's just way too many songs, and a lot of songs are extremely long. But um, outside of that, man, if he would, if we take off the songs we don't like on this, I it probably it probably be super early to say this, but I th I would say it's close to a uh, a classic Kanye album to me. But um, yeah, I I give it a four out of five, man. It's I just don't understand how people saying this is trash. I don't, I don't understand how people actually listen throughout this whole thing and just say it was trash. Even if you if you don't care for the content and you not a religious person or don't care for what he's talking about. It's hard to me. It's just hard to sit there and say, "Hey, this is trash." <laughs> like, I, how could you listen to something like this? I just don't get that. I hundred percent agree, man. I would give it a four out of five as well. Um, I thought it was a strong comeback effort and something I didn't have a whole lot of faith going into. And even though the, it's getting panned critically, I think this album will age well with time. I think we'll look at it as one of the more outstanding efforts. In that, you got to think about it, man. He made a gospel Christian mostly album and put like every hot rapper on it. And they all yep. blew in pretty well. Nobody else can do that. Nobody else has the nerve to do that, man. Everybody else is going to skip stick to what's safe. And Kanye is the only artist really pushing boundaries like this. So you got to apply them for that, if nothing else. Um, and I will definitely keep revisiting this album as time goes on. Uh, yeah, four out of five for me, man. 
Uh, Let I me ask you a question go... before we leave. Will Drake, be, will Drake drop a better album on Friday, in your opinion? Be honest. I don't know if either one of you are huge Drake fans or not, but like, and if you are, that's fine. I'm just, but yeah, I mean, this is a uh, mob ties, uh, affiliate, yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, look, <laughs> well, I will say, based off what we've seen right now, no, because. Usually Drake is the one who who builds more hype coming into an album. I said that last podcast, he's coming into this cold. Um, the uh, album art looks terrible. May, I'm hoping there's some kind of joke at the end of this, and we're all getting played, and this is some kind of brilliant turnaround where the album is actually fire. But I have no confidence going into the Drake album. I got to admit, man. But who knows? He's he he knows what he's doing. We'll see. But will it be better than this? I have a hard time believing that at this point, man. I think it'll be okay. I think he'll do his thing because he's Drake and he'll deliver the hits, but I don't know. I, I would say my guess is no at this point. Yeah, I think, um, I actually think the Drake project will probably get way more run than this one because like you said, Ryan, this album have been criticized a lot, which I, I, I really don't get why. But um, this album is kind of like, hey, you know, uh, this album ain't for everybody. I think the Drake album will be somewhat for everybody. And it's going to get a lot of play on the radio. It's, it's going to get a lot of spins. And um, a lot of, I don't know how long it's going to last, but um, I think it's going to get a lot more run um, and more more recognized than Kanye. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but I think time will be much kinder to Kanye's albums over Drake's. I, I got to say that. I agree. But, but Drake is is the king of the moment, so we'll see how it goes, man. Has he ever dropped a classic? Uh, hmm. See, I'm just asking you. I mean, look, I, I'm not the biggest Drake fan. I, I like his music. Yeah. Uh, I think I think his first mixtape's a classic. I'll say okay. that much. I think so far gone's a classic. Um, I think Take Care is probably a classic too. Oh. Anything other than that, I don't I don't know. I, I wouldn't it just, say it's a classic. It was just yeah. good when it came out. Yeah, and we actually talked about Scorpion, um, how I, I really don't remember what, what was on that album like that outside of the, you know, the the big single. Yeah. It's like that. To me, I felt like that was kind of forgettable. Yeah. Like, I, I know the number. I know everybody look at the numbers that said, look what this album did, but I, I don't even remember what's on that album <laughs> like that. He had a Jay-Z song on that album. Yeah, yes. produced by Juicy J, and it was or, the worst song Juicy on the J. album. Yeah, not Juicy J, but DJ Paul, and yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just the reason why I ask is because like Kanye did three fifty in one day, which is in streaming numbers that's not normal, and he released it at eight o'clock on a Sunday. So like, if he would have released mm -hmm. it on Friday at midnight, you really have to wonder, like, what would Kanye yeah. have done? Because you're right, it does come down to numbers. And Drake's going to do him. He's going to do 650, 700, because that's just who he is. Um, but I, I just I just thought I'd get y'all's y'all's take on it. But, hey, let me yeah. come back on when Kendrick drops, please. <laughs> oh, definitely, man. Yeah, definitely. for sure. We'll revisit, because I'm sure he'll, he'll drop on a very artistic off day as well. So <laughs> I'll do another bonus podcast for the Kendrick album, probably. So we'll definitely have you back on, man. I know you got to get out of here, but go ahead and plug your projects, man. What you got going on for people? Yes. So, uh, again, thank you guys for having me on. This was, like, a true blast. Like, it was so fun <laughs> to be able to have this conversation with y'all. I hope I didn't come off too much of a Kanye stand, but... Uh, oh, no, you good, no, you no. good, man. <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter at young, R-E, A-R-I underscore gold. Um, and you can follow my podcast. I host a podcast called Texans Unfiltered. It's the number one Texans podcast. Um, we've been around for five years, just two dudes that started a podcast to talk about the Houston Texans. Have a lot of fun doing it. We've had a lot of great interviews with Bill O'Brien and a bunch of players and things of that nature. Um, we're just an unfiltered, kind of give it to you how it is. You guys can either take it or leave it type of podcast. And, uh, yeah, again, I really appreciate you guys having me on. I look forward to doing it again. Real quick before we go, are we starting another protest at NRG? Uh, I knew it. Did you did you start that? Was that it. you? <laughs> I had to throw that at you, man. Oh, <laughs>
Brandon gives me so you, much shit about that. Every time I talk to Brandon, I didn't think I'd get it from you today, too. Yes, <laughs> no, I will own it. I will own it. I, I started the rally, not a protest. Oh, hey, no. No. I chose a bad day to do it. It was Martin Luther King Day. The only reason I did it, the only reason I did it was because I thought if Martin would if Martin could march, I thought he was basically inspiring other people to stand up for things they believed in. It was very ignorant and dumb and blind by my part because I do know the history of MLK. Um, I just thought that was the only day people were off on a Monday where it could actually happen. Um, and you know what? I made a mistake. It was a dumb mistake. I can't believe I got 100 people out there, to be honest with you. Yeah, but no, I was kind of impressed with that, man. <laughs> that was kind of impressive that, you you know, you got people on board. And then I ended up get, having to have a sit-down one-on-one with the head director of the Texans for texting Cal McNair um because of it so yeah it was just you know it was one of those not the brightest spot but hey at least i can say as a fan of a team i did something that nobody else tried to do to be honest with you that's true yeah now i mean he's still on the roster so he might see another rally of another kind if he actually gets in the game at some point yeah. but that's all another podcast yeah, we'll that so. next time. <laughs> yeah. appreciate uh, you guys i yeah, appreciate, appreciate it, you man yeah